Hey, it's Candy. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to my first Blue Apron box. Our first recipe is going to be chicken tetrazzini. I think this will be good for me to take to work this week. I have a small complaint. Oh, we're washing laundry. I have a small complaint about Blue Apron. Not everything comes in like one bag. This, they call this the chicken tetrazzini knickknacks. And then all this stuff comes in separate bags with all the other stuff. And so, I don't know, it, it, it's not really a complaint, but it is. <laughs> so what we need for this recipe is two scallions, some chicken breast, some detali pasta. I've already got the water on, salted water onto this. Some Brussels sprouts garlic and then in the next bag we've got some dried mushrooms Italian seasoning a block of Asiago cheese oh the Italian seasoning is getting on everything what the heck uh, grade A cream European style fresh quark cheese I've never heard of that there's literally Italian seasoning all over everything. All right, so that's fun. <laughs> so I've got the oven preheated to 450. And like I said, I've got a pot on to boil water. So what I'm gonna do is, the mushrooms are gonna go in a bowl with half a cup of hot water to reconstitute them. I'm just gonna use this little container. just gonna go in here to soak set aside <sighs> peel okay we're going to slice up the Brussels sprouts peel and rough chop the garlic which we're gonna need two cloves of cut off and discard the root ends of the scallion and thinly slice separating the white and the greens and grate the Asiago cheese on the large side of the box grater okie dokie let's get going We're just going to chop the garlic as best I can because it's so tiny. This is why I usually buy chopped garlic. It seems a little bit lazy, and it probably is, but I have some in the fridge, but I wanted to kind of, I don't know, do this today, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Here's the, the problem with having nails too is that you can't really get that close to like what I'm cutting because the nails kind of get in the way. All right, I think that's good enough. Let's put that to the side. Four pretty large Brussels sprouts. Just going to chop off the ends and then thinly slice. I'm a semi good fan of. Brussels sprouts. Um, I think it all depends on how they're cooked. So if you don't like them, try them a different way. I, I kind of preach to try everything at least twice. You can't try it the same way twice, especially a food. If, if you don't like it sauteed or boiled, try it the other way. Brussels sprouts. And then we just have the scallions to deal with. 
The last time I played with leeks, someone said not to eat the green part, and I found that to be wrong. Um, the green part is where all the best nutrients are. So don't discard those green parts of those leeks. All right. We're going to grate the cheese. The pasta water is boiling, so I'm going to add that. Okay, we've got a pan here heated with some oil. And I patted dry the chicken and seasoned it. that I chopped and took the water out of. Whoop. The garlic and the scallions. I'm gonna let that cook until things get soft. And I'm gonna drain the pasta. I'm actually gonna cheat a little bit. They want you to put this all in a baking pan and bake it for four to six minutes to melt the cheese on top. And I say that's a waste of my time and my dishes. We're gonna add in the cream, the Italian seasoning, the pork cheese. Whoops, it looks like cream cheese almost. Um, a little bit not as sour tasting as cream cheese. Let's switch the bunch back here because I'm a messy messy. There we go. If you wanted to, you could put this in a big pot and, you know, Cook it all together. We're in a, in a baking dish and then, you know, bake it. I don't see, I don't see why I need to. I'm actually gonna add all the cheese. Some of this pasta water to bring everything together. Smells yummy. My washing machine sounds like it's gonna take take off flying somewhere. Alright. I was supposed to turn the heat off and I forgot, but turn the heat off. I'm gonna let this sit to the side and kind of mellow out. Mellow out for a few. But look at that, it's gorgeous. All right, so for lunches this week, I'm just gonna separate this into two containers. Again, you're just seeing the bottom of the pan. Why do I do this? Because I'm an idiot. <laughs> 
And made a mess. And made a mess. And there we go. I'm the only person that eats it. Let's take a bite though. Okay. <coughs> so we get some noodles and some Brussels sprouts and some chicken. Okay. Um, hmm. It needs something. Something a little extra. I'm not sure what it is. It's really good, but it needs something a little bit like. Maybe sour cream would be better because it's got that tang instead of the quark cheese. It needs that little bit of tang, I think. Yeah, I think that's what it is. All right, let's move on to the next one. All right, now we're going to start soy glazed chicken. Um, the first parts of it. Uh, preheat the oven to 450. Uh, prepare the bok choy, the ginger, the shallot, the garlic, and the peanuts. Then you make a sauce. All right, I'm going to go get the ingredients and show you guys what we got. All right, so for this one, we've got some skin on chicken. Hold on. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. <clears throat> Boneless skin on chicken thighs. What the meat is. Jasmine rice. Bok choy. Put in the knickknack box. Something else came open. All right. <clears throat> so we've got a soy glaze, rice vinegar, black garlic, ginger, roasted peanuts, sweet chili sauce. Gojujang, which is a spicy paste, sesame seed oil, and a shallot. So, I'll put this stuff aside and start with the veggies. I've pre read the directions. So, I know that I'm going to need a sheet pan. I'm going to need to line the sheet pan. I'm also going to need a large piece for the vegetables. So, and get that out, set everything aside. So that I can put that together when I need to. All right. Start with the bok choy. We're gonna cut off the very end. And it looks kind of like celery. And then we're just gonna slice it. here on this tin foil because I know that's where it needs to go. So the oven is preheated. Just gonna slice the shallot. 
that'll be easy easy peasy lemon squeezy okay that's gonna go with the bok choy and the ginger is as well going to combine the soy glaze which I'm not sure how much of this we actually get the sweet chili sauce uh, we're going to add like half of the goju jing. Okay. Okay, so I've got the chicken seasoned. We're just going to take half of the glaze, put a quarter on each one of these. Save the rest of the glaze for later. Okay. This is going to go in the oven for about 10 minutes. And we're going to deal with the black garlic. This is only going to take me a few minutes, so. Let me see if it says specifically how to do this. I sort of know how. So, what you're going to do, is you're just going to kind of squeeze it out of the skin. It doesn't smell weird or anything, just so you know. It, uh, the texture is kind of like a fig, I would say. See how you can kind of crush it? It doesn't chop very easily. It's very, very sticky. There, that's what I'm going to do. We're going to add that to the remaining glaze. So that's going to be the remaining glaze for later. Let's get this out of here. I am not actually going to use the peanuts. I do not really like peanuts just so you guys know there is peanuts and you basically just use them for garnish all right so we're gonna deal with this now it's gonna take about a tablespoon of olive oil I'm gonna put Johnny's on because that's what I like We're just going to toss this together. And then fold this over and make a little packet. Then when the chicken is 10 minutes done, we will take it out and add the vegetables on the tray. All right, the chicken and vegetables just came out of the oven very carefully open up the veggies what did I do with it? there it is and then the rice vinegar is going to go in with them 
It sounds like my rice is done too. It smells delicious. All right, let's get this plated up. Okay, so we've got the rice, the veggies, the chicken, and then I've got my lunch one over here. We're just gonna take half the glaze that we added that garlic to, put it over the top of the chicken. Do the same on this one. Voila! There it is. I'm gonna take it into my room and we'll try it. We're actually just gonna do it here because I don't wanna set up lights and stuff in my bedroom. <laughs> so let's try some of the bok choy and the rice. The vinegar adds a really nice bite to those veggies that you wouldn't get otherwise, obviously. Oh, I just cooked the rice in my rice cooker, you guys. I didn't show you that part. Okay, here's the chicken. Mmm. That soy glaze is really nice. That goju jing, it like, it just kind of bites you a little bit and it's so good. Um, I might be making this again. This is kind of stuff that I usually have around anyway. I really love Asian flavors, so. Oh my gosh, guys, I'm gonna cook and it's not 6.30 in the morning. <laughs> So we're gonna make pork chops and salsa verde with roasted potatoes and sauteed kale. Sounds delish. All right, place an oven rack in the center of the oven pre oven to 450. Have the potatoes longwise, then cut crosswise into quarter inch thick pieces. Place on the sheet pan, drizzle with olive oil, season with salt, pepper, toss to coat. Arrange in an even layer, roast 20 to 22 minutes or until browned. All right, let's get on it. I forgot to show you guys what was in the bag. So there's two red potatoes some parsley, I got some kale, the pork loin chops, and capers, red pepper flakes, and red wine vinegar. All right, this looks like it's gonna be fairly simple. So I'm going to cut them lengthwise and then get a chunk. I love these little paring knives. They're like $1.50 at the kitchen outlet store and they're just so nice. I have them in like four colors. Here's a little trick that I also like to do. If I have to toss something with salt and pepper and oil, I put it in a baggie. And then I'm going to put the oil and salt and pepper in there and I'll show you. These potatoes are very white on the inside. I'm going to get these fairly evenly sliced so they cook evenly. So you're just going to drizzle. A little bit of olive oil in there. And then I'm going to take Johnny's instead of salt and pepper. Get the air out. And then just kind of massage everything. I may have showed you guys this trick before, but I think this works so well to get everything Okay. And then I'm going to take the potatoes, lay them out on the pan in an even layer, as much as possible in a way.
is, seems like a lot of potato. Then we'll just wait for my oven to preheat and we'll pop those in. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is cook the pork. While the potatoes roast, pat the pork dry with paper towels, season with salt and pepper on both sides. In a medium saucepan, heat olive oil on medium high until hot. Add the pork, cook four to six minutes per side or until browned and cooked through, leaving any browned bits in the pan, transfer to a cutting board and let rest. I can do that. While I'm waiting for my pan to heat up, I thought we would prepare the rest of these. Uh, while the pork cooks, remove, discard the stems of the kale, roughly chop the leaves, finely chop the parsley leaves and stems, finely chop the capers, peel and finely chop the garlic. How much garlic? One clove. So for the salsa verde, to make it a little bit easier on myself, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the parsley leaves in here. And then I'm going to grab my kitchen scissors and chop this up with them. And that was super simple. <laughs> um, combine the chopped parsley, the capers, half the vinegar, make the garlic into a paste, and some olive oil. Okay. So we're supposed to finely chop the capers. How do you finely chop capers, guys? Seems like I need a bigger knife, maybe. Let's try it. Let's try it. I did put my potatoes in. good. Put this in the jar. So we're gonna turn the garlic into a paste they said and that's by squashing it. I'm doing this with your knife. I really love garlic, so if there's more, I don't really care. It's not really turning into a paste, though. I've seen people do this with garlic and adding salt to it to do it. Using the flat side of your knife, smash it until it resembles a paste. I mean, I think we've done all right. It is not a taste, but half of it's gonna go in here. Parsley, capers, half the vinegar, tablespoon of olive oil, and half the vinegar. Is that half? I don't know. <laughs> uh, then salt and pepper. There's that bottle gone. We're over a six or a seven. All right, these pork chops have been cooking for about 12 minutes. So I'm going to pull them off and let them rest while I cook the kale. So we're going to take the kale in this same 
pan is what I'm trying to say. And I put the garlic paste in here. And I think what I'm going to do, well, I know you're supposed to do this. You're supposed to put in the rest of the red wine vinegar. And now we're starting to wilt and cook and get down. This is only going to cook for a couple minutes. Okay, it's probably done now. <laughs> you don't want all the green to be gone. I'm going to go ahead and pull this off. Turn it off. Set it on the back burner. And come back because there's still five minutes on our potatoes. Okay, so here we are plating. We've got the pork chops down, or pork chop down. You know how I do. I'm going to eat one and one's going to be for lunch. So there's the kale. And now someone's calling me. Really? All right, then we're going to take half the salsa verde and put it over the top of the pork. There we go. It looks beautiful. There we go. Yay! I get some pictures and I'll try it. Okay, guys, time to try this. Let's try the kale first. It's actually kind of good. For some reason, that vinegar in there gives it a little bit of a bite, and it's it's almost tastes like sauerkraut. I really like sauerkraut. <laughs> so here's the pork with some salsa verde. Mmm. It's really good quality pork. That salsa verde is... I've never had that before. It's pretty good. It's got a salty bite to it. And then roasted potatoes are always good. This box was really good. Um, the recipes were pretty simple. Uh, it was good quality came on time <laughs> so yeah so far so good um blue apron box number one done all right thank you guys for watching don't forget to like comment share and subscribe i'll see you next time